Hi, it's Heike with Heike's Furniture Art Sideboard Makeover Part 6 this time. Um, we've been working on this sideboard for a little while and uh, we still haven't done the sides. So today I am going to work on the sides. I am going to apply decoupage paper. I'm going to show you how I applied that. And uh, especially there is no decoupage paper without me aging it somehow. And I'm going to show you what I am going to do to branch it up a little bit more. This is what it looks like at the moment. I finished the sliding doors and I still want to wax them to protect them, obviously. And most probably using some, uh, some waxes to deepen the colors. And here are the four drawers that I did ray stenciling on. I really like it. It's very subtle and still visible. So um, I, I still have to protect them as well and um, sand them down a little bit and give them some waxing or some varnish, some top coat. Not just sure yet. Just wanted to give you a heads up what it's like now because now I'm going to start the sides. Hi to part six, where it's about the sides today. I uh, finished approximately the front, did some re-stenciling. I did my abstract um, mixed media canvas on the sliding doors. And now it's about the sides. I was wondering if I was going to leave as is, meaning just one color finish. And um, I decided no. I wanted this piece to look funky and very special and I've decided to put a decoupage paper on. The decoupage paper I am going to put on is this one. It's got huge letterings which kind of links with the front sliding doors and um, I'm just going to put this on, it's thick paper, I don't need to worry about the underneath if it's uh, light or dark, it's just getting this tissue paper on and um, or this decoupage paper on and uh, I will afterwards, I really like this down here, I like these colours down here, but I wanted to have the word unique on the whole side. So I'm going to miss out on these colors and I'm just going to create them, try to create them on the, on the paper. We'll see how that goes. Normally when you do decoupage, you should, or use a tissue paper, you should have a light color underneath. I don't think I need that because my paper is quite thick and even if it was a thin paper i would have gone with a darker base because i want this paper to be in in the piece kind of so i've decided to uh, choose or to apply gravel road from dixie bell which is let me just be aware which is a, a gray with brown undertones which in my opinion would go quite well with this paper. So I'm going to apply a base coat, let that dry, and then go ahead with my decoupage. I'm using this flat brush for this, and I'm just slapping on the coat. These flat brushes, this is um, Scarlet from Dixabel, but you could use any other flat brushes. I also have these. These are natural bristles, these are a mix, and I just like it because you can do quite a few centimeters, I'd say, quite a big surface with, uh, with, the, with those flat brushes. I haven't decided just yet what I'm going to do to the top. The top is a bit damaged and I wasn't able to um, repair the top like I wanted. So I 
would have to use some texture. Okay. Okay, that's it. That's it. I'll do the other side now. I put my paper into place and I just ripped off the last bit. Don't ever throw away these pieces. You can use them on something else, some smaller, or you can do collages with them. So always keep them. I have a little stash of my leftovers. What I would like to do, I might have said it before, I'd like to create some rustiness or whatever you might call it at the bottom but to make it easier for me I just ripped it off I'm just leaving a bit of an overlap so it's easier afterwards to take your sanding paper and sand the overlap away and even here whatever is left over I'm going to keep I take down my paper and I will start adding the um, excuse me I will start adding, I'm going to use the, um, the clear cut satin from, from Dixiebel, which is my go-to decoupage medium at the moment. I really, really like it. I've talked about that one in my last project, the, um, when I did the wardrobe. So I'm going to use that. I am not going to use the iron on method. Why? I don't know. I don't feel like it. <laughs> might be easier to use the iron-on method but why do I have to do it easy if you can do it difficult right <laughs> so I'm going to pour some in here and uh, and then I start my decoupage let's get started I poured some in this container I'm going to put quite a bit glue or varnish on here as the paper is thick you have to put a base coat of the varnish with very thin paper you can just um, go ahead place it and go over it with the glue which is fine but for me it is extremely important that this paper is going to stick so i'm going to put on quite a bit without being too globby or, or you know that the glue will drip or something it's not like that so like so as my friend Jonathan Mark Mendes says and I'm going to start getting it down on here I took this with me, so it helps me pushing it down. As the paper is thicker, you can lift it slightly. Just do this up, up. There are a few wrinkles, but hardly any. I'll just take the tape off up here. Oh. Wow, it sticks. What's it doing down here? Oh, I had the other tape underneath, that's why. Okay, so let's do it like this. Yes, that's much better. I like to take a roller and go over it to help it adhere and really get it down on that glue. And this also helps you get rid of more wrinkles. see although it's thick paper you can see the dark underneath coming through and that's just fine with me for me it's okay that it's not 
the very light color coming through as the whole piece will be in kind of darker shades if that makes sense i'm going to continue lifting it up a little bit and taking my varnish again start slightly lower than the paper and then go up so it doesn't glob on the paper just on the line so just do this go in sections to make sure that you really get it down and your glue doesn't dry in the meantime that you're putting the paper on because if you have to lift it then the varnish or the glue might already be dry so i'm doing exactly the same as before i'm going to put my paper down and i'm going to start oh shit okay so what happened here I was too hard on the paper and the paper tore for me. So I'm just taking it up. And I might have gone too hard on it. It's quite okay. It doesn't matter. I distress it a bit. So be aware, let me see if I can do that with the roller, if the roller is better. I think it is. If you go with the roller over it from the beginning, it's better than saturating the paper up here. And then when you, when you go, let me show you a close up. Um, where is it here? Yeah. You see it tore for me because I went over it and uh, I'm not going to touch it anymore. I'm going to let it dry and then see what I'm going to do with it. Just add a little bit of paper, ah, not paper, just add a little bit of paint and uh, maybe distress it a little bit. Something else learned. And I always appreciate learning, even though it's frustrating. It's, uh, it's a nice thing to learn. And especially when people tell you, oh, I'm really glad that even people who have been doing this for so long, they still do mistakes. Yes, we do. And uh, if you learn from your, your mistakes, then it's okay. So this varnish, this top coat from Dixiebel is is thick and this is why i think this happened to me it's not super thick but much thicker than a usual top coat and this is why i like it because because it's just it just helps me really get that get that paper down and not having a lot of air bubbles and that also means that when you work with it, as it's thicker, it saturates the paper so much quicker than another top coat might do. I think I'm good with my roller. I think that's the way to go. Just make sure that you don't have any air bubbles. Just go over it. Press that paper down without tearing it like I just did with my with my t-shirt. Again, don't do your first strokes up on the line where the paper is finishing, but go up afterwards so you don't have uh, a problem. 
fact you take off a bit of the varnish but make sure that you have it on there and lift it a bit to make sure that you have everything on there you can lay it down I'm going to, again, go with my roller over it. Put a wrinkle here. No big deal. But I'm still trying to get it off. and another one coming up to the line now and again it down, make it adhere to the piece of furniture and then take your roller and roll it down, press it down with your roller. When I have thinner tissue paper that I use, what I usually do is I put some saran wrap on top and then go over it with the roller or, or, or something that I have on hand. But here, as this is a thick paper, I'm not doing this. Up. Make sure the corners Are down as well. It's not really a dead here, so I'm just taking a bit more glue. Most probably you have to go around, or I have to go around afterwards once everything is dry and see where I didn't put enough, maybe on the edges, I'd have to get back. But I'm not going to take off the edges just now, I really want this paper to be dry first, otherwise I'm going to tear. Talking about experience. can feel the humidity of the glue everywhere so that's a good sign I most probably will have to go back up here on the edge here but that's not a big deal so that was it for the decoupage of the sides I will do the other side now and uh, once this is dry I'm going to distress this take off the edges and then I'm going to add a bit of my twist.
This is what the side looks like now. I applied quite a few colors. I used reds, yellows, mixed them. I used browns and blacks and I grunched the paper up, not everywhere, but you know, in places like here to make the link with the front, the same thing at the bottom to make the link with the front. And I wanted the whole bottom, in fact, um, let me see, like this. I wanted the bottom to have a bit of more color, but like here, I hardly put on anything. As I said, you will have to put a top coat on your decoupage paper before you start doing that. Best is to put two coats so it and let that really dry. And then you can start applying other layers of paint with spritzing if you want to. But at one point you have to stop. And I've come to the point where I can see the paper is quite wet again and I do not want to rip it up. So I'm going to stop, let it dry and I'm going to start working on the other side. I'm in the finishing touches now and I've decided to give this light wood that I don't like, I'm going to give it some wood stain and I'm going to use some water-based wood stain and um, I find it here, like you in the US, you might have Hobby Lobby, we have Hornbach or Jumbo and um, it's the colour Palisander that I really like and it just gives a nice finishing touch to the drawers and even if I've got darker wood drawers I also use um, the stain because it just deepens the colour much more and on this piece especially I don't want to put paint I don't want to paint it I really just want to give it this wood stain the idea is not mine it was a friend a furniture friend of mine her name is Nicola and um, she has, she is from or she is with Nicola Interior Art and she sh said she does that and I said okay I'll give it a go and since then I really like using this. It will not hide any, you might see this here, it will not hide any stains. So if you want to hide stains, then you better go and get some paper on there or some paint. But again, this piece is vintage, so you know you have to expect a bit of stains and it's not that bad, so it's just fine. Just be careful that you do straight strokes and not swirls like this. I had bought a piece where somebody did that on the inside. Most probably thought will look nice. I give it some stain and it just looked horrible because once this dries, you can see that. You can see the swirls. So just, you know, do straight strokes. If you think it's not dark enough, let it dry at least a bit and then you can go over it again. I'm going to do the same thing to the insides. You will have to, if you want to, protect the wood and give it some protective coat. You see, 
it's already already showing here where I put to the side and I didn't go over it immediately so I have to be quick here so I can hide it and get a clean finish. Back to my protecting. I don't know how many of you put top coat in the inside drawers on just on wood, on bare wood. I do depending on what the piece is for. Then I will just stick it up. Then I will put some uh, protection on it, just a top coat, something. But otherwise, I mean, you know, the drawers usually they don't have a protection inside if it's raw wood. But you can obviously do that and give it some more protection. Don't press too hard. I'll give it a go here as this is oops, a water-based stain. I can just spritz just a tiny bit so the uh, the paint will glide a bit better. looks just so much cleaner than if I hadn't done anything, at least for me. I'm going to do the trims and I'm also going to do the, the sides so it's cohesive and not something different on the inside and on the outside in terms of paint or in terms of stain. Just make sure you go everywhere, but also make sure not to have any drips because once this is dry and you have drips, well, it's just like with paint, you'll have them exactly the same. There you go. That looks good. I'll do the other side. Same thing. I'm going to give it a little spritz as well and just go over it. It's really quick. At least I think it's much quicker and cleaner than with paint. I do sometimes, you know, do the drawers, paint the drawers inside, but. I'm not a big fan of painting inside drawers, at least if I have big drawers for a chest or something like that. You just have to be so careful with drips. And that's not the same as with this one, with the stain. I will see if I will have to go over it again to make it darker, I don't know yet. I. Maybe I have to do something in here, just so you can see it. Maybe something here. I cannot really go over it, in fact, because it already soaked in. I find this so much nicer. Make sure you get those corners. This is water-based, so you can just clean your brush. Or if you don't feel like cleaning the brush, then just throw it away. Just doing the back. 
and I will continue doing my other drawers exactly the same way. Okay.